Thank you very much for inviting me and presenting Aspen Seestadt. Um, actually, in the last period I'm working on it, I wasn't really thinking of it as a new town in that sense, because it's an urban enlargement project within uh, Vienna. But on the other hand, you are right, it, not only its physical appearance, but also the whole image, uh, and from the whole image, it is a new town. And so I'm also looking at it a different way, uh, only through the invitation. Um, here at the start, I uh, gave you a picture of what Aspen Seychat looked like um, only two and a half years ago. You will see other pictures later. Um, but to deal with the challenges that have been mentioned, I have to say, I have to explain a little bit more about the challenges of Vienna as a whole at the moment. And uh, the, the, the main challenge is not how to bring people there. Uh, we, there are 7,000 people living in Seestadt uh, at the moment, and I think there's no single apartment um, free. Um, because our main challenge in Vienna at the moment is growth. Um, if you look at this chart, we used we were used to quite a stable and shrinking uh, city where we could build our quality of life in the existing structures for a long time. But then 1989 came with the fall of the Iron Curtain and then specifically the um, EU Eastern Enlargement in 2003 and onwards um, created a massive movement and, uh, of growth to Vienna and this prognosis is only one year old, but already outdated because last year we grew twice as much as uh, we thought. We didn't expect so many people from Syria, Afghanistan, and so on to come. Sure. Um, so maybe for the um, for the uh, people from Africa uh, and Asia, these are not e enormous figures. But for us, uh, it's a new challenge to. Uh, um, to, uh, because the second largest city of Austria, for example, is only 280,000 inhabitants, so we have to build something like that in Vienna within uh, 20 years' time. Um, <coughs> that's why in the 2005 Urban Development Plan, the target area U2 Seestadt, U2 is an underground line uh, that, will, or that it has been extended to that place, has been defined as a key area of urban development. Um, and Aspen Seestadt is the core of that key area. Um, the area lies in the east of Vienna, uh, next to the railway line between Vienna and Bratislava. Uh, so that gives some opportunities in traffic. And Aspen Seestadt itself is built on the site of a former airfield. Uh, it's roughly the size of the uh, first district of Vienna, 240 hectares. Um, when the airfield has been disused in the 70s, the first idea was to make this an industrial area, and that's why here down in the south uh, you see a big uh, Opel motor factory uh, still functioning today. Uh, but as you know, European industrialization stopped in the 80s then, and so this process didn't continue. Um, but that's also why uh, at, the, um, at the time when uh, the decision to develop that area has been uh, taken, this area has been completely in the ownership of the Republic of Austria in combination with uh, the business agency of the city of Vienna, which uh, makes it... Uh, which gives a big opportunity for us to develop it in comparison with the land around that is in scattered property of farmers. Um, in the meantime, they have been taken in two private partners uh, for financing. <coughs> um, on the traffic uh, integration, you see this U2 line extension that has been built already. And uh, there is also a highway uh, network extension planned and uh, it's also very important for that area that at the moment has quite rural structures in roads. Only two roads uh, go to the east from uh, 
this existing highway. So that's, sorry, um, that's the proof. The underground line is there. <laughs> um, and um, that's the master plan. In, uh, there has been a competition on the master plan um, that has been won by a Swedish architect, um, Tovat, Johannes Tovat, follower of uh, Erskine, if you know him. Um, and uh, it has been criticized of being very uh, monocentralistic and, uh, uh, and too much of a, uh, how do you call it, new, um, well, new urbanism style, but I'm working with it for some time and I'm really happy about it. It has very strong elements, a lake in the middle, a ring road around um, that makes it very flexible in the in the in field. It gives the idea of density of mixed use and uh, the blockade around is an issue, but it can uh, but it comes out of the situation and is solved also quite easily. Um, to be on that, uh, the targets only some figures. The target is 20,000 inhabitants. We will reach that easily and overcome it probably. At the moment, this part is built and it's only 7,000 inhabitants. Uh, it's already 7,000 inhabitants. It will, it will be hard to bring 20,000 workplaces there. Uh, there are several efforts done on that. I will uh, go on that later. And it's also quite a challenge to reach a 20% motor traffic proportion. In the whole of Vienna, we have at the moment 29, which is already quite good, but in those areas, uh, uh, it's not that good at the moment. Um, so what do we do to achieve these uh, goals? Uh, one thing is to create a dense, diverse, mixed-use quarter that does not make too many journeys necessary. Um, we invest in quality of public space and also monitor the quality of the buildings to give this new area an image of, uh, of high quality from the beginning. And we uh, um, go on to the environment targets with the aim of a city of short distances um, with offers in eco-friendly mobility and efficient con construction site logistics. Sorry. Um, density, just to have an idea, the area that you saw before has an, a floor error ratio of 2.5 and the areas that are closer to the, um, to the uh, metro stations will have higher floor area ratios. Um, it was pointed out before that the question of diversity is very important for a place like this. Um, it's tackled in that way that there are a lot of different offers to different layers of society. Uh, there is offers in rental and ownership houses, in subsidized, non-subsidized housing, um, and in building cooperatives. So that contributes to a mixed social structure uh, at the place. And there are all kinds of offers for businesses from 50 square meter stores to uh, 10 hectare building plots. Um, in diversity of origin, uh, already in the first uh, 7,000 people, we see that it's quite an average uh, structure, but uh, what's still not very diverse is the age structure. We have very few people older than 45 uh, living there. Um, on the mixed use, maybe this is a particularly interesting thing. In Vienna, we have the experience that in new areas, it's really difficult to get um, the developers to build mixed use buildings. Um, few developers want to go into the risk and have a shop in the ground floor and housing on top of it. Um, and so what was done to tackle this here is uh, that first in the plot sale competitions, there, there were competitions that is standard in Vienna uh, for this kind of housing um, that where developers compete and the best project will be built. And there, uh, some definitions has been taken where shops should be established in the ground floor. And for the core zone that is red here, there has been a management company found beforehand. It's a shopping center management company that guaranteed already in the uh, competition 
uh, that they will rent at a certain uh, price the, the ground floor and will take care of the basic uh, supply structures there and uh, maintain it and rent it on to other companies. Um, then uh, on the targets for business allocation, um, the, this target comes from the problem that most workplaces in Vienna are on the other side of the Danube and many people have to commute. So there is the wish to bring more businesses to, to that area. Uh, and the Vienna Business Agency, as one of the co-owners, uh, takes care of that, has already had some uh, results, but um, still the, the, the highway is missing. That makes some difficulties, for sure, in that field. Uh, quality in open space uh, is uh, very important to give an positive image from the beginning. Um, this was underlined by a concept that has been particularly uh, uh, made for the public space by uh, Gehl Architects Copenhagen that said, concentrate your urban ambitions to one main line. That's the most important thing I want to tell here. And then uh, draw all the conclusions for the building plots uh, ahead. I have to hurry up. Um, those are the actors. Uh, the development company kind of plays a, a role of uh, in between the city administration and the uh, developers um, in quality management and introduces quality levels into their uh, plot sale contracts. On mobility, um, there is a certain fund funded by the companies that maintain the garage um, that is invested into alternative offers of uh, mobility, um, like cargo bikes, like uh, car sharing, the collective garage, not every uh, building has its own garage, and uh, uh, strollies for every uh, inhabitant so they can make their shopping by walking. <coughs> um, yeah. And the next challenge for me personally, because that's my job, uh, is how to integrate it in the surroundings. Um, there is a few other uh, development areas around uh, that should be developed in the next years. Um, all these dark gray, gray areas here are also agricultural at the moment. And we have had a, a quite big process on a general plan for that uh, in the last years. So that was the promised picture of how it looks today. <laughs>